A DRO is a measurement instrument. Before we can fully trust it, we need to calibrate the scales and make sure that the readings are accurate and repeatable. In Touch DRO, this is very easy to do using the tools that you probably already have in your shop. We will need a 1-2-3 block, a dial indicator with at least an inch of travel, and a magnetic indicator base. I will also use a 10 thousandths indicator, but it's not strictly necessary. With the tools sorted out, we can calibrate the x-axis. Let's attach the indicator base to the carriage. We can use an empty tool holder as the measurement surface. First, we need to make sure that the DRO readings are repeatable. Once you've set the indicator, zero it out against the tool holder side. In Touch DRO, press the zero set button to zero out the X readout. Now move the cross slide away and then back to zero. Make sure to approach zero from the same direction as if you were taking up the backlash in the lead screw. Repeat this a few times. The reading in Touch DRO should return to zero. If it doesn't, there is something wrong with the installation or the scale itself. We will cover the troubleshooting of common problems in a separate video. Now move the indicator one or two turns farther, and then return back to zero. Notice that the reading is consistently off by 0.0010. This is caused by encoder hysteresis. It is a sort of backlash in electronics and is very common. Let's jump into touch DRO settings and add compensation for it. To open the setting page, Tap the hamburger menu and select settings. Tap on the X axis settings. Scroll to the bottom until you see the encoder hysteresis setting. Tap on it. Recall that the reading was off by 10 10 thousandths. Since the axis encoder steps per inch is set to 10,000, this is really just a single encoder step, so we enter 1. Tap OK to apply the setting and go back to the main screen. Zero out the X axis again in Touch DRO and check that the DRO shows zero when you move the indicator to zero from both directions. The readings go back to zero, so we know that the scale is repeatable. Now we can take care of any linear error by running the calibration wizard. Let's go back to the X-axis settings and scroll down until you see the Calibrate button. Tap it to bring up the Calibration Wizard. The first prompt will ask you to enter the size of the calibration block. We will be using the long dimension of the 1-2-3 block. Let's enter 3 and tap Continue once. Let's preload and zero out the indicator against the tool holder. Tap Continue again. Don't move the cross slide while Touch DRO is analyzing the data coming from the scale. The next prompt will ask to indicate the back edge. Back out the cross slide. Hold the 1, 2, 3 block firmly against the side of the tool holder and move the cross slide until the indicator is back to zero. Tap Continue. Touch DRO will collect the position samples again. When done, it will display the confirmation dialog. The calculated resolution looks reasonable, so let's tap Apply and go back to the main screen. Let's check that the calibration is correct. Tap on the X-axis readout to bring up the Set Dimension dialog. Enter the size of the calibration block that you used. In this case, since we use the long dimension of the 1-2-3 block, I will enter 3. Tap Set Dimension and move the cross slide until the indicator is back to zero. The x-axis readout in Touch DRO should show zero. If it's off by more than one encoder step, try redoing the calibration. If your DRO shows exactly two times the length of the calibration block, the scale input needs to be inverted. This can be done by toggling the Invert Readout switch in the x-axis settings. In this case, though, the x-axis reading shows zero, so we took care of the linear error. Since I'm using a magnetic scale on the cross slide, we need to check for any nonlinear error as well. Let's switch to the thousandths indicator and zero it out against the body of the tool holder. Make sure that the indicator is parallel with the x-axis to avoid any cosine error. 
and touched Yaro, press and hold the zero set button to set the absolute origin. Tap yes to accept. Use the indicator to back out the cross slide by 50 thousandths. Tap the plus button to save the X axis position. Back the cross slide by another 50 thousandths and tap plus again. Repeat this for the length of the indicator travel. Our goal is to compare the readings we get from the scale to the ones we get from the indicator. Even though this is a rather crude method, it will give us a good idea of how accurate the scale is. We are looking mainly for the cyclic error, which is very common with magnetic scales. This particular scale uses encoder tape with 5 mm pole spacing, which is close to 2 tenths of an inch. Cross-checking the readings every 50 thousandths will be enough to reveal this error. If your scale uses magnetic tape with 2 mm pole spacing, you will want to sample the position every 20 thousandths. It's also a good idea to do this check at a few different spots. Almost done. Let's take a look at the coordinates in the list. Ideally, we should be seeing numbers that end in 0, 0. In practice, the readings can be off by a couple of ten thousandths. We were using a relatively crude analog indicator. If we take a closer look, we'll see that the needle doesn't always line up precisely at zero. Let's see how far off our readings are. Points 3 and 4 look pretty bad. Point 3 should be at 0 0.15. It's 18 ten thousandths under. Point 4 should be at 0 0.2. It's 27 ten thousands over. Let's scroll down and see how the rest of the coordinates look. There are a few that are over a thousandths under and over two thousandths over. But points three and four have the worst spread. This is what the errors look like on a graph. The peaks are spaced 0 0.2 inches apart which coincides with the 5 mm magnetic pole spacing of this scale's encoder tape. This sort of cyclic error is often caused by incorrectly set scale ride height or reading head misalignment. We will cover magnetic scale installation and troubleshooting in a separate video. For now, let's check and calibrate the z-axis. We will start by checking if the scale is repeatable. Let's zero out the 10 thousandths indicator against the face of the chuck. Tap the zero set button to zero out the z-axis. Check that touch DRO readings return to zero from both directions, just like we did before. The scale appears to be repeatable and doesn't have any hysteresis. Let's leave the indicator zeroed against the face of the chuck and go back to the application settings. This time, tap the z-axis settings and scroll down to the calibrate button. Tap it to open the calibration wizard. We are going to use the 1, 2, 3 block again, so let's enter 3 for the calibration block size. Tap Continue. The indicator is still zeroed against the face of the chuck, so we can just click Continue. Move the indicator away from the chuck and firmly press the 1, 2, 3 block against the chuck face. Move the carriage back until the indicator is back to zero. Tap Continue and touch Yarrow. This is a 5 micron scale, so the proposed resolution looks good. Tap Apply and go back to the main screen. Let's check the calibration. Tap the Z readout. Enter the size of the calibration block and tap Set Dimension. The carriage should still be exactly 3 inches from 0, so we just need to move it back until the indicator reads 0 against the chuck face. The readout returned to 0, so we have taken care of the linear error. The z-axis on my lathe uses an optical DRO scale. Optical scales almost never have non-linear error, so are done with the calibration. Touch DRO is now ready for use. This is all for now. Thank you for watching.